Hey guys, it's coming in my review for The Marksman. So what The Marksman is essentially about is we center on the character of Jim Hansen. He is this retired uh, U.S. Marine who lives along uh, the Arizona-Mexico border. And basically, he's someone that also uh, attempts, you know, he reports attempted, like, illegal crossings and things like that. And one day, he encounters this mother and son who are Mexican citizens on the run from the cartel. And he witnesses this tragedy that ends up happening when... Uh, her son Miguel, um, when uh, Miguel's uh, mother Rosa is killed and basically he decides to protect Miguel and basically try to get him away from this cartel and hopefully just give him a better life overall. So the Marksman, I was not really excited uh, for this film. I mean, I will say it's very fitting that even in a pandemic, one of the first movies to start out the year, in fact, the first theatrical movie to come out of the year is still a, a Liam Neeson action film that's very on brand for January. And, you know, I wasn't really expecting much from this as a result. I feel like we, Liam Neeson, he keeps putting out movies like this. And this just didn't really look like it was going to be anything that special, anything that different. So I wasn't really all that excited for this film. But I was keeping an open mind that hopefully maybe this could be something special. And I will say The Marksman is not really a good movie, but it actually is a little bit better than I was expecting. That being said, it's still pretty subpar and what you would expect um, from... Liam Neeson at this point, but we're just getting to right now, starting off with the cast. And just like any Liam Neeson movie, I mean, that's definitely one of the high points of this film. Liam Neeson, no matter what he does, no matter what role he's in, he's usually really good, and that is still very much the case here. He does a very good job at playing this character. You really do feel like he turns it into this character of Jim Hansen very well. You really do uh, feel for his character, what he's kind of going through. He's got his own sort of personal tragedy as well, and I think Neeson did a good job with that, but also just the care that he puts on you can tell there is still legitimate effort there and he's always good at playing these roles he's always very convincing in them and that still hasn't really stopped here he's still really good in this movie and I liked what he did end up bringing to the table here he was far and away shocker the best thing about this movie but also Jacob Perez who plays Miguel the young boy in this film is also not that bad I actually enjoyed his performance here I was worried at first that this was going to be a child performance that was not that great but I actually thought he did an all right job in this movie I enjoyed his chemistry with Neeson I thought the two worked off each other very well you cared about their bond uh, because of how well they worked together overall and I thought he did a good job in in this movie I found myself liking um, what he did in this film and I thought he matched up against someone like Neeson pretty nicely but now let's get to the directing and the writing which this is what I will say about the directing here from Robert Lorenz this film is legitimately trying to be something a little bit different and that is something that I did appreciate it's more of a road trip film it's trying to be a little bit more fun in that way and I think he does do a pretty good job with that his directing here isn't bad in any way but it also isn't really that inspired it doesn't really feel like he does anything that different in terms of style or anything like that to make this feel all that memorable and that's where this film does um sort of lose me I think that his directing it's it's suitable that's the best way to describe it it's suitable directing that does work you know when it comes to action and things like that it's well directed and he does a pretty good job with that overall the writing is where we get into some of my issues uh when it comes to this movie and i will say it's not nearly as generic as i was expecting like i said there are things that do elevate it for me and it's mainly the fact that like i said while this is an action film it also is more of a road trip movie we go on this adventure with jim and with uh miguel and you know i like that it was trying to be something a little bit different it's not just neeson in like this one location you know trying to um you know to prevent this catastrophe from happening like that's not really the kind of movie we're dealing with here and like I said, the thing that does elevate this film is the relationship between uh, the characters of uh, James and Miguel. You really do care about their relationship. The film takes a lot of time to really get you there. At first, they're not really connecting, but then they do. There's a really good hotel room scene, especially, that I actually really did appreciate. I found myself caring more about this bond than I really did expect in that way. And that's something I did legitimately appreciate about this movie. 
and I think they did a good job with that. It's just, as a film, it's still very formulaic, and that is the thing that does bring it down. There really isn't a lot about the Jim Hansen character that separates himself away from other characters that Neeson has played. He has gone through a personal tragedy of sorts, but it really isn't dived into much at all. We know that he's lost his wife, and we can see that it's troubling him, but it's just not something that we focus on enough. It's something that we hear about every so often. It's it's something that does seem to be bothering him, but there's never really that one moment where like he comes to peace with it. It, it just kind of feels like something that's very much put on the back burner because the film is so concerned about the plot. You know, it's clear that the film's focus is the plot. It's not really on the characters and as a result it makes his character feel a little bit more generic in that way but I will say he does go through a legitimate arc in this movie you know he starts off and you can see that this has very much hardened him and he is really just kind of doing this because he feels like it's it's his own like personal responsibility to care for Miguel but as the film goes on he does start to care for him a bit more and that's something I did overall appreciate but again aside from that it's still just the badass, you know, main character that seems to be on top of every situation and, you know, always seems to be the one to, you know, rescue everyone and get himself involved with these crazy characters, but always comes out on top in that way. There just, there really isn't anything that different to him as a character. The villain in this movie as well, he's just so over the top. He really is just someone that he's just so intent on pulling Miguel into the cartel, and there just really isn't anything else to him. He's very stereotypical in that way, and I just don't think the film does a very good job with uh, his character. He just, he feels very one-note, and the film really takes no time to flesh him out, and he just ends up being a very forgettable and honestly kind of cheesy villain overall. The way they portray the cartel tell itself it's just done in such a uh cheesy and corny manner the way they go about it it just it, it it feels very over the top in that way it doesn't really feel like it's given the time to really be fleshed out or anything like that so i think that definitely does uh bring the movie down overall and there are a lot of story elements that just don't really feel like they get the time here there's a side plot with miguel liking this girl but it just it feels very surface level it never really feels like the film is really um giving it the proper depth that it really does need and so again while there are things i can appreciate there still are a lot of things that does bring it down uh my other complaint with this movie is katherine wenick's character she plays this character sarah in the movie that you know she starts off and you think she's going to be very integral she talks about how like she's very worried about jim because he's getting old and she doesn't think he can do this any longer but it never really feels like she has that much of an impact on the story she's there and she's in the movie but she kind of disappears after a while and you don't really understand what the point of her is why she really has as much involvement as she does in this story and I do think that overall very much did hurt the film so again the screenplay it, it really just isn't anything that special we have very much seen it done before and the way the movie wraps up especially I was not really um that impressed by it but there are a couple things that do make it a little bit more fresh than i was expecting and that that is something i did enjoy about the screenplay cinematography wise i really did not think this film was anything that special the action scenes are fine for what they are but nearly every single one of them is forgettable there really isn't one that i'm thinking of right now that you know is coming back to me i can't think of that one action scene that like really sticks out as like that's the reason to go see this movie they all just kind of feel the same in that way and i don't really think the film did a very good job with that at all i wasn't that impressed when it came to the action sequences in this movie they're not bad or anything but they're just generic like we've just we've seen them done before not really anything that special to them and the cinematography itself again just doesn't really stick out it's very standard in that way the score as well isn't really anything that special here and the editing i think the movie is well paced for the most part i never found myself bored with this movie i was checking out in a couple parts but i actually don't think it's horribly paced i think the film takes enough time to really settle you into this adventure and that's something i did appreciate when it came to this film 
So ultimately, the Marksman, it really isn't anything that special. It is very much a generically Misa movie at the end of the day, but there are a couple things that do elevate it. The chemistry between Neeson and Perez is definitely very strong. They work well together overall. You care about the main relationship in the film. The film does try to give Neeson a bit more as a character, but it is far too one note and far too underwritten to really stick out as anything that special. It still can't seem to escape the trappings of basically every other Liam Neeson film. And again, it just kind of makes you wish he was doing something else. Liam Neeson is a very talented actor and I just don't know why he keeps resorting to these kinds of movies. He keeps talking about, oh, I'm kind of done with action movies, but it doesn't really seem like he is because he's still doing the same thing here. And I feel like it's really limiting him as an actor. I want to see him do more things like, say, Silence or something like that, but he's not really doing that. He's continuing to do this stuff, always good in them, but that's really all there kind of is. As a film, this really isn't anything that special. It's basically what you are expecting it to be. Again, there are a couple things that do elevate it, but it really isn't anything that special at the end of the day. So I am going to give The Marksman overall a C+. Plus. Over guys to my review of The Marksman, the most you guys saw this movie, all of your thoughts, and we'll see you guys in my next video, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.